Hey, what's up guys? So today we're looking at the Alcatel Idol 4S. This is a $350 phone. Um, it's $350 because I got the one without the VR. So the only difference is for 50 bucks you get a VR headset and you get a, uh, a case. So I got the one for 350 that doesn't have the VR headset because I have a ton of generic ones laying around and I got a case for like seven bucks off of Amazon. So we're gonna review the phone. Other than those two things, it's exactly the same as the bundle. And uh, let's dive in and see what it looks like. So like I mentioned in the intro, there's two versions of this. There's this one that's just the phone and screen protector that's for 350 bucks. And then there's another version that comes with the VR headset and a case for an additional 50 bucks, so a total of $400. Um, for me, the, the extra 50 bucks for the headset and the case wasn't really a good deal because I have a bunch of generic ones laying around and then I got a case for like I said, seven bucks off of Amazon. So some of the specs on the on the phone, it's got Marshmallow 6.01, it's got a Snapdragon 652 with Cortex A72 GPU, three gigs of RAM. The display is a 5.5 inch uh, quad HD display. The rear camera is a 16 megapixel that records up to 4K. Front camera is at eight megapixel. Storage is 32 gigs, but you can add a micro SD card. It has Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 and the battery is a 300 milliamp per hour battery. Uh, we'll get to the battery a little later. The Quick Charge definitely comes in handy with this device. The outside of the phone, the phone itself is a really good thickness. Um, it, it feels good in the hand. It's got a nice weight. The thickness is about seven millimeters or a little more than a quarter of an inch. Um, the weight is about 149 grams or about a third of a pound. The only thing is this odd button placement and if you've seen other reviews, a lot of people have a complaint with this. It has the power button along the left hand side and then the volume on the right hand side and then this boom key. The boom key for me, it's kind of a gimmick. It, it does add some additional features depending on what application you're in, but I hardly ever used it other than to turn on the screen. And then on the back, it's got a fingerprint reader that actually works really well, but it, uh, it it's kind of hard to find it if you don't have a case because it's flush with the back of the case. So you find the camera bump and then you kind of move your finger down and it, it, by the time you do all that, it defeats the purpose of having a fingerprint reader. So you definitely want to use this phone with a case, number one, because the back of the phone is a fingerprint magnet and number two it'll help you find that fingerprint reader much easier uh, the phone does have a headphone jack on the top and uh, micro sd on the bottom the micro sd is kind of off center and that's not really a problem except for the fact this phone does not have uh, uh, chi wireless charging and you can get those little plates that kind of slap on, you know, in between the phone and the case and just plug into the micro USB port or USB-C if you have that. But they don't really make them for these off-center ones. It's They're assuming that the phone has a center micro USB. So if you want to get one of those aftermarket Qi pads, you're kind of out of luck on this phone. One of the really nice features of this phone is the screen. It's a, a quad HD screen and it's really bright and very, very vivid. It's, it's actually a very nice screen on this phone. Some of the connectivity on this device, it's got Wi-Fi obviously, and the Wi-Fi is actually really good. I get really good uh, reception on this phone, even better than some flagships, like the uh, Note 5 that I had, and the Galaxy S7 Edge, and uh, some of the iPhones. I get better Wi-Fi reception on this device than I do on those other devices. In addition to Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth 4.2, so it's a little more energy efficient. Uh, NFC, it's got a dual SIM setup, so you can either use one SIM and a micro SD card to expand your storage, or you can use two SIMs. So if you travel internationally, you can have a US SIM and an international SIM in there, or if for whatever reason you want two SIMs from two different carriers, you can do that as well. Um, I've been using it on T-Mobile in the US, and I've been getting full 4G LTE, and that 4G LTE reception as well has been very, very good. Connectivity, performance, phone call uh, quality is all very good with this device. Moving on to the performance, in day-to-day -day activities, the phone is very fast. It's got a, the Snapdragon 652, which is an older chip, but for day-to-day -day activities, regular apps, browsing the web, YouTube, email, that kind of stuff, you're not gonna see any performance hit. 
the average game, you're not going to see any performance hit. And then in graphically intensive games, that Cortex A72 GPU, and that kind of gets you sometimes, and you, you do see a little bit of slowdown in those graphically intensive games, but the average game, you know, Candy Crush and Angry Birds, or even getting the older GTA titles on the phone, those all work fluently and, and no problem at all there. The camera on this phone is actually very, very good. I'm not going to try to compare it to, you know, an iPhone 7 or a Galaxy S7 or a 7 Edge. It's not quite that quality, but for a $350 phone, the picture and video quality is excellent on this device. And, and for the average person, unless you're doing some professional stuff or you need super high quality video and pictures, it's going to be more than sufficient for family photos and family video and things like that. The camera app is actually really uh, nice as well. It's got different modes, so it has a, a manual mode, but the manual mode, as far as I can tell, is for stills only. You can't use the manual mode when you're taking videos. It's got a panorama mode, um, auto, so autofocus, auto exposure, that kind of thing. It's got a slow motion mode that works really well. You can do what's called micro videos, so you shoot quick little videos and easily add effects to it to make you know a short video clip. And it's got another option, I think it's called Pronounced Fuse. Um, it creates parallax video, so you can take a video of a subject from different angles and it's kind of a 3D parallax effect that you can shoot on this phone. The stills are very clear, 16 megapixel shots. In low light, it takes a little bit longer to focus and this phone doesn't do great in low light, apart from the taking a long time to focus. It, has a lot of noise as well and I had some trouble getting shots that weren't blurry in low light so just keep that in mind. 1080p video on this phone is very clear and fluid. I didn't have any problem with drop, drop frames. Um, the exposure switching between different levels of light you know is a little bit uh, slow. It didn't work perfectly but again we're talking about a $350 device and it worked um, very nicely for a $350 device. The 4K, it does shoot in 4K, but I did have a little bit of problem with some drop frames, so it's not completely fluid with the 4K, but the 4K video looks very nice. So now we get to the biggest thing that I don't like about this phone, and that is the battery life. So it's got a 3000 milliamp per hour battery, which, you know, is somewhat standard. I couldn't get through a full day with this. Maybe if you had real light usage, um, and you didn't play many games, you didn't have the screen on much, you could get through the day with no problem. That's probably true. But for me, I'm a medium to heavy user and I barely got through a work day, let alone a full 24 hour day without having to charge it. The fortunate thing is it does support that Qualcomm 2.0 quick charging, so it does charge very quickly. But one of my requirements for a phone is good battery life. So I have a lot of trouble dealing with um, the fact that for my usage I'll have to charge the phone during the day. So in conclusion, I would have to say that this is a really good budget smartphone, but not a great budget smartphone. There's a lot of other options out there that are within the same price range between 350 and 400 that offer a little bit better performance, a little bit better battery life, and same basic functionality. So you might want to look into those. On the plus side, it does perform very well day-to-day -day usage basic gaming, somewhat moderate gaming, it works great. The, even though it has the Qualcomm 652 processor and a little bit older GPU as well, it still performs very, very well. If you're gonna be doing heavy gaming, um, if you wanna shoot super high quality video, or you're a heavy user that wants us to get through the whole day without a charge, this probably isn't gonna be the phone for you. Uh, hopefully you guys found this informative um, and it'll help you make a decision on the phone. If you want to check it out on Amazon, I'll have a link below. And please hit that subscribe button and rate and comment the video. And I'll be putting some more videos out in the coming days. Thanks so much for watching guys and look forward to seeing you next time.